Hey, it's Kyle from Campus Gains. I'm helping college students build muscle and get lean, and I am extremely excited to be here on an official interview with Kevin Kreider. And I don't know if you noticed, but Kevin Kreider is the uh, author and creator of a couple of courses that I promote over at Campus Gains in my tools section. And just to let you know a little bit about him, he has a degree in exercise science. He's a PN1 certified nutritionist. He's a personal trainer. He has a massive Instagram account with over 73,000 followers. He's competed in bodybuilding competitions and even received his IFPA pro card. And he's also a professional working fitness model. Uh, his website is kevinkreider.com. I understand he's going through a little bit of transition right now, yeah, but it's going to look awesome when it comes out. So Kevin, thanks for being here with me today. Hey man, Kyle, I was really honored to actually be asked to do this with you. So I'm excited. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. So, I mean, can we just get started with the interview? Let's go to it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So first of all, can you talk a little bit about who you are, your brand, like what kind of people do you help and represent and like what results do you give to people? Right. So my name, well, my name is Kevin Kreider. My last name might throw you off a little bit, but it's German Irish and I'm obviously Asian. So I was adopted. <laughs> that was three years old. And I grew up really skinny and not very confident in my body growing up. And what I really found with fitness is that it created this change in my body. Then it changed a lot in the way I saw things about myself in the world. And I was able to make that a lifestyle. And I was able to make that a career. And it just seemed like the more people I was able to share this with, the more I felt better about myself. And then, so muscle building is one of my specialties. I love seeing people get stronger. I love seeing people not fit into their t-shirts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of a catch 22. It's like, do I have to get new clothes? I was like, yeah, you're gonna have to get new clothes. But then, <laughs> it's an opportunity to get more style. Um, and the types of people I've helped recently have been people who are actually feeling the same way. Like they just don't feel confident going into the gym or they don't feel good about going to a bar or a social setting. They feel like they're a little bit like missing that extra edge that other people seem to have. And that's the types of people I help. And recently it's been people in the fitness industry who are trying to get into photo shoot ready for whatever reason of doing weddings or even models actually recently have been reaching out, getting ready for photo shoots. So I have a lot of people, a wide range of things, even some actors up in New York because I used to live there. And that's, that's who I've been helping recently. Wow, that is really cool. And you know, I can say that college students probably really relate to that whole confidence aspect because yeah. I can even remember back to some of my first few days at college when I stepped onto the campus and you're just thrown in with like hundreds of new people all your age, you don't even know. And I honestly, I don't, I was into fitness at that point in time and I worked out in high school, but I was so intimidated that I decided to work out at home before I even went to the campus rec center. Yeah. And I even talked to uh, another guy named Nate Fulton, uh, in another interview, he had the exact same thing. He ended up losing tons of weight over the course of his college career, but same thing. It's just like, it's a lack of confidence that, you know, kind of drives you towards fitness, but it might hold you back in the beginning. Right. So like, that's another thing too. So a lot of these programs out there are super complicated, right? And they change up all the time. And then you're like, I don't know if I can keep up with this, let alone even step foot into the gym. Right. <laughs> right. And I got to tell you, man, nothing feels better than results. So, you know, a lot of these times I see college students or young people, cause I, the gym that I train out of, we have uh, college students go, go in there all the time it's part of their membership and they're just doing these wacky exercises and it's just like mind blown and they come in looking the same all the time and it's just like you know i think it's i think it's a it's an interesting thing where you say it's like most of the college students don't go into the gym because they can't even they can't even give themselves motivation to you know, do the right exercises because there's so much information out there, right? You don't know which map to follow. And it's just, a, it's a lot of, I feel, I feel for the college student because when I was in college, there was a lot less information out there. 
and I was studying exercise science. So I was confident in what I was doing, you know, mm -hmm. especially after a while. I do got to hand it to like even those, those guys who are in the gym doing the wrong things because mm -hmm. they're still ahead of those who haven't like built up that like, can you just give me an example of something you've seen? Just <laughs> oh my weird. God. I mean, this sounds really, I see it all the time, but I'm just like, I see people doing these lateral raises like, and I'm just like, yeah, that, that looks cool. But then they'll do it in like a squat, like on a BOSU ball. And like, <laughs> it's just like if, unless you're like 90 years old and you got to work on your balance, like you don't need to do those lateral raises on a BOSU ball in a squat position. <laughs> it's really super cool. setting multitasking, bro. Yeah. Like, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, you gotta work. Yeah, bro, your 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 physique looks good, but yeah, I'm really concerned about your balance. Actually, you've never heard that once. No, no. <laughs> okay, well, let me let me throw it back at you a little bit. Um, can you tell me about like your mindset before and after you got into fitness? Because I understand that you know I've been to your your site and your about page, and I've read about how you called yourself the skinny Asian kid and you were referred to as Bruce Lee. Can you kind of like talk about like that transition? So yeah, I was, I was definitely picked on a lot for being Asian and the karate chops were, they were flying all over the schoolyard <laughs> at me. So oh. I <laughs> and yeah, I really didn't feel good about the way I was portrayed. And I was like skinny and gawky and awkward. I also, I don't know if you read this, but uh, you know, I'd have tics, nervous tics a lot. Um, it's called Tourette syndrome. So my parents also, you know, they would try to put me on medication when I was younger and that didn't work at all. Um, and then I got into fitness and uh, working out and doing sports. And that totally changed my mindset. Like I was able to focus on something finally other than my tics. And I, it totally went away and it totally changed that. So when I started to get bigger, not only does it help you with your confidence in the sense of you're doing something that other 99% of the population can't do, which is look good physically right <laughs> that gives you a lot of motivation and confidence but also to the discipline that it takes and i'm not talking about a large amount of discipline like a lot of physique competitors do but just a little bit of discipline to get your butt into the gym get it give it your all and seeing your numbers go up seeing your numbers go up is really important because now you have something you can gauge and that itself gives you so much confidence to go in there and be like, okay, like, you know, you see all these transformation stories and you want to be a part of that now. So it's, 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 that's my motivation. And that's what I think of as like, I want to not be that skinny kid that got picked on a lot. I'll never want to go back to being not sure of myself going into the gym or knowing what the right exercises to do. So that keeps me going. That's great. And you, I like the point that you make about like watching the numbers go up because I think what a lot of guys don't realize is just even like the smallest, like you don't have to do everything at once to get on the track to the body you want. Like sometimes even doing the smallest thing gives you such a boost and such a like even a minor change that all of a sudden you just start looking better than you were. And that's enough to just drive you, you know, straightforward like at 100 miles an hour into it yeah so, and i think that's a problem like everybody thinks it's so complicated that there's all these moving parts that you have to put together to get where you want to go or if you just do like a couple things you know you will get there much quicker than if you do nothing like the 90 percent of the rest of the population i think too uh, going on top of that people get confused on the stuff that doesn't matter for building muscle yeah so it's like i i have this 80 20 principle it's uh pareto's principle and it's 20 percent of the things you do give you 80 percent of the results the rest of it's just icing right mm -hmm. so the thing is we forget for muscle building we got to get strong because that's what builds muscle and that and that's that that increases over time and then we have to eat enough or if we're trying to lose body fat we have to eat less and the rest of it's like detailed stuff, but we forget about the main 
things that really work that we got to focus on and put our energy in. It's not like supplements all the time. It's not <laughs> pre-workout meal, right? It's like, I think we get so confused because we read all this research on supplements that promise quick fix. And that's just not where our focus should go or our money. Right. Cause I yeah. know a lot of college kids, like I spent like a hundred bucks on supplements a month in college. And I thought that was outrageous. Like mm -hmm. too much money goes into that. And I'm like not getting, you kind of get a little pissed off at supplement companies. Cause you're like, wow, like what's, why am I, why am I not seeing the results? You know? And it's like, they don't promise you, just from this, you got to actually go into the gym and do it too. Mm -hmm. No, I completely agree with you. And in terms of that 80, 20 principle, I actually had someone on Twitter the other day, uh, direct message me. He was a pretty thin guy. Looked like, you know, he hadn't, he was just starting out, but his first question to me was, um, so do I, how many slow releasing carbs do I need versus like the glycemic index of, and I was like, dude, you're thinking about this all too wrong, man. <laughs> so it, I completely understand that. Yeah. Well, well, let me, um, let me go back to your story again. When you actually started getting fit, what were some of the like obstacles that you had to overcome? Did you have a problem gaining weight or or building up a balanced physique. Talk about like some of your struggles. Yeah, so nobody told me about balance, first of all. So what I would just do is arm exercises a lot <laughs> and a lot of crunches and ab crunches or whatever, whatever that little thingy was that my mom was doing, you know. <laughs> um, and the thing is, nobody told me about symmetry. Nobody told me about compound movements. Uh, growing up and this is like my early teenage years before college where I really learned about the principles of building muscle the hardest part too was trying not to gain too much fat nobody told me about muscle it grows a little bit slower than losing body fat right because losing body fat seemed to be pretty um predictable if you know what i mean so you can go on a treadmill for a very long time and basically eat a couple pieces of fruit and you'll probably lose a pound you know like <laughs> literally the next day but nobody told me that was unhealthy too <laughs> so those were like really big things where i would just end up staying the same because i would drastically overeat then drastically undereat, and then for a long period of time i saw no results for a while um, so that was definitely a challenge that I had. There was a long period of time where I got results pretty quickly in the beginning because, you know, as a beginner, if you do the right movements and stuff, you can get muscle pretty quickly. There was a period of time where I just stayed the same for a long time because I was trying to go up and down. And literally, it could even be the same day, you know, like <laughs> – I, I would try to lose body fat and gain muscle in the same day. And I'm like, nobody told me it wasn't possible, you know, at, <laughs> at a certain level, you know? Yeah. No, no, I completely understand that too. I, I've, I've gone through similar things where I would yo-yo around with my diet and, you know, I would be lean one day and bloated the next day. And it was kind of hard to, to focus on what was, what was the right, I wasn't making it a lifestyle. That's mm -hmm. kind of, I think that's what people miss. They take all these little tactics and they try to throw them together the best way that they can, but they don't realize that if you, you know, those basic principles like we talk about, trying to eat somewhat healthier, you know, balance your calories seven days a week as, a, as opposed to huge one day and then nothing the next day, you know, you know I, I really understand you there. I think another challenge too, Kyle, for me was – I was doing too much. Like, I think we all go through that period of time of like, oh, we get some results. Let's do more. Let me throw an extra day in. So instead of working out three to four times a week, you're doing six, seven. And then you're like, <laughs> you're wondering why you're not getting stronger or you're not gaining any muscle and why it's so hard. And like the moment that I started backing off a little bit more is when I actually got the biggest results. And not only that, but like my mental psyche was just better. Like I was feeling better. I was more energetic by just cutting back a little bit. So I think another challenge is you start seeing results and you want to do more. I would like encourage people and my clients to pull back a little bit. Don't get ahead of yourself because you'll end up going back a lot further if you do too much. 
Oh yeah. That's a huge problem. Like, especially like with your diet, like if people don't understand like calories and they say, Oh, I cut this many calories out. If I cut even more, it'll go faster. That's right. like, that's a huge plan for failure right yeah. there. Cause you're just going to be starving and it's going to plateau and you're going to yeah. just get frustrated and give up. And that's what most people do in that yeah. kind of sense. And then like all these things you see on movie actors who are getting ready for a role and then you idolize their workouts for, that take two and a half, three hours a day and their nutrition. But they're like, I'm literally just getting ready for that role. I look, they, they even say, I was like, I am not movie ready right now after <laughs> the movie's over. And they have somebody following them around, like telling them what to eat, how to work. Like that's a short term fix, which is not what we're going for here. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely not. Well, I want to ask you now about your courses because yes. over at Campus Games, I have a couple courses and I even kind of hinted at how I came up with that where I personally asked you, I said, Kevin, what are two courses that would be good for a college student with limited time, uh, not a lot of experience with nutrition and maybe they have some limited food mm -hmm. choices on campus and you threw these two courses at them and I evaluated them. Um, uh, by the time this interview goes out, I will have a review up of one of those courses on my site. So time traveling right now. But, <laughs> um, but uh, can you talk about maybe a couple concepts in your courses that are like the foundation and why they work so well? Because you do have good, solid testimonials of people who have gone through them and gotten good results. So maybe talk about like what makes them so effective. So what I really like about the lean body, which is the home workout that you can do with the resistance bands, what I like about that, it's not a lot of workouts at home requires zero equipment, which is, it's doable, right? But I mean, like with resistance band, it's what they call it, resistance. You're adding added resistance to the movement. And what I like about it too is like you're in and out. You can go in the dorm in between your homework, right? Or in between class and you can do it in like 45 minutes and get out there, get stronger, feel great. And then you, act, you can actually track the resistance increase, the bands increase, which is great. And what I love about it too, it's like if the nutrition is a lot more flexible than people think. Um, you know, there's methods in there where you just basically the non-negotiable is pretty much just hit your protein and stay, stay under your caloric deficit, right? And even then, if you really want to lose body fat, just stay underneath the caloric deficit. And the way, you know, you and I have the same principles, like just, you know, we follow flexible dieting. It just makes it a little bit easier for when you're out in the college campus world. I mean, I remember cafeteria food, they're not, it's not all organic and clean, you know, like clean. <laughs> I hate to say the word clean, but it's, it's really, it's, it's a hit or miss, right? Mm. Um, unless you do the salad bar every day. And that's what I think it's, it's really just zoning in on. It's just like, Hey, look, this is what really works. And then the other stuff is just like optional cake stuff. If you really want to take it to the next level, okay. it's easy to follow. It's so easy to follow. I think. No, I got you. And I, I love the, the home workout one because, like I said, there are guys who just don't have enough confidence yet to go into the rec center and work out with everybody else. And maybe once they see some results, that will yeah. build them up and then they can move on to, you know, barbells, machines and, and things right. like that. I even really like when in the introduction, even before it says you get your hands on some bands, you got a, a full body workout without the bands in yeah. there. <laughs> that is really cool, too. Yeah, that, that's one thing where I tell people too, I'm like, look, this will help you for a, a period of time, but it's a whole body workout. And I, I put an option for just glutes and butts for any like female who wants it even. And you know, there's guys who want a big, like bigger lower body too. So I put that option in. It's just that when you want to really take it to the next level, you need added resistance and resistance bands are great. And actually that came from uh, a model who I work with up in, up in New York. And he was like, I need to travel. I'm on set a lot. I can't do a gym workout. Give me some push-ups to do. And I was like, I got something better. Let's do some resistance bands with the workout and just get, and he's like, wow, this is great. You should really do a program. And I was like, Oh yeah, that, that, that would actually appeal to a lot of people. It's like, do it on your own time. 
doesn't take much, takes less than three hours a week, right? And then also too, like just carry around the resistance bands, like put underneath their dorm bed or something. It takes up almost zero room. So it's really, it's really easy. Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't even thinking about the traveling too. Cause I've noticed that a lot that a lot of guys, like even if they're not, you know, they're outside my audience, they're not in college or if they're like going home for a period of time because they live on campus and they don't have access to a gym there, you know, you still have a good workout that you yeah. can do. Yeah, I mean, it's great. And then the, the gym workout, what I like about that is it's very easy in a sense of it's only three workouts as well. And you can, it sounds really weird, but like what I really like about the lean body is if you do miss a day because it's split upper and lower, you could just do it all in one day if you really wanted to. That's what's great about the lean. I don't recommend it, right, because it's, it's overtaxing to your body. But if you actually had to, it's an option. So there's a lot of different – it's pretty flexible, the workouts, too. Just get the lifts in. Yeah, maybe based on your recovery there. you know. Yeah, you based on your recovery would be tough, but it's doable. I just don't recommend doing, doing it, like, all the time. You know? I got gotcha. Could you – okay, maybe – could you uh, share maybe some, like – some good like tactical tips or something from your course. So something that's a good takeaway from this interview that maybe uh, someone listening could like try right away and, and mm. kind of like get, get a little mini result from this. Great. Well, I mean, you and I, we both do intermittent fasting. And I think that's a huge thing because that's a time saver and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Most people who are super busy actually don't, eat breakfast conscious unconsciously now we're making it conscious and for a reason and to get a great effect and to also take the stress away from you from eating so many meals frequently because you don't really realize that's like almost an hour out of your time if you eat breakfast with intermittent fasting even right it mm -hmm. can be unless you're doing the noodle diet then it's like two minutes and then you got to eat it but <laughs> There's so many other things you need to use your mental energy for. The last thing you want to do is worry about meal frequency. And mm -hmm. that can take up a lot of time and a lot of mental energy that you could be doing for other stuff, for getting better grades and focusing on your body as well. So, you, you know, there's a lot of stuff we talk about with intermittent fasting. But, you know, in the workout courses, like it just makes it really flexible for you to use intermittent fasting and the workout at the same time. No, that's a great, great tip there. And I would say like, you know, college students, they typically have a hard time getting out of bed to go to their first 8 a.m. class anyway. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to stuff a Pop-Tart or something down their throat. And, you know, I don't know how long you've been intermittent fasting. I've been doing it for probably like six years now. How long have you been? I actually been off and on since 2013, but this last year I've been doing it for a year because I said, I'm going to make this a lifestyle because what I was doing before with intermittent fasting, I wasn't, I was doing a pure water fast. That Ooh. was hard. No coffee, no tea. Right. Yeah. Um, and that was difficult. And I didn't, I was like, how can I do this? And then when I added coffees or teas in my fasting period, that was like, okay, I can do this. I can make this a lifestyle. And so a year, actually, it's been a year. Great. You're man. intermittent fasting and it's never been better. And it saves you so much more time. I actually realized I was like, Sweet, I, I got a little bit more time on my hands in the morning. Like, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> yeah. And also I would say, I don't know about you, but my mental focus seems to be a little better when I'm fasting Absolutely. in the morning specifically. And I would say that's a huge bonus for a university student when they're going to that class. And most of those, you know, most of those kids are showing up in their pajamas anyway, and they're hardly even awake. But if you show up like actually alert because you don't have, you know, maybe some fatty carbs weighing you down or that yeah. big bowl of cereal you had. So I, I can definitely see some advantages right there. Absolutely. Like that's actually funny you say that because my business has never been better actually since I started doing it. And I think, I think it's, I believe it's like my focus is there when I do videos or interviews, it's just like, there's this fog that gets lifted. You know, I, yeah. I remember eating breakfast and being in a li literal fog, even when I drank coffee, 
<laughs> and, and you know, I can see why people get addicted to frappuccinos because they're getting a spike from the sugar, but not from the coffee as much because you're just drinking coffee wrong. I know that sounds really <laughs> ridiculous, but you're drinking coffee the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely understand that. I actually, uh, just last week, I stopped doing uh, energy drinks. Mm. I was an energy drink junkie for the last year. I would have one monster a day. Mm. And I finally came to the point where I'm like, okay, I really need to think about this and what I'm doing to myself. Because I got to the point where it wasn't having any effect. It was yeah. just like emotion and I liked the taste. So this previous week, I officially switched over to coffee and more water. And that was, that was like, it was almost a very easy transition. It was hard to believe, but that was it. Actually, just an additional note, I took a lot of pre-workouts in the past. But what I found with intermittent fasting, like I got too jittery or, and anxious because the effect from intermittent fasting with the increased energy and focus with the pre-workout was just a little bit too intense. Like, and actually, it was detrimental. It wasn't more effective, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. if you understand. Um, and then when I got off of it, I was just, it actually helped me get off of pre-workouts, you know, <laughs> because I was like, there's no way. I can't, can't do this without a pre-workout. <laughs> like, you know, and just like, talk about another thing to worry about or to focus on wrong, which is like a pre-workout. And it's just like, actually, I got off pre-workouts Intermittent fasting helped tremendously and I've, my strength came back in a matter of like a week or two and my physique never changed. Uh -huh. <laughs> so nothing really changed except that I just don't take a pre-workout anymore. That's great. That yeah. sounds great. It's a great yeah. benefit and it saves you tons of money, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're not eating as much, you're definitely not spending as much on food. Yeah. So, so I like, I like all this tactical stuff we talked about. We talked about, um, Simply to gain more muscle, you need to eat more. You need to be in a caloric surplus. To, to lose uh, body fat and to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. Make sure you're getting your protein in. Um, try intermittent fasting if, you know, if you're having trouble eating, um, I guess, on a schedule. That's probably the thing. And I would say when you're in college, that's a big thing right there. And it just simplifies everything. So maybe just try skipping breakfast for a week and see how you feel. And hopefully you'll, you'll get all the benefits that we talked about here. And coffee and tea in the morning, that helps to get through the fast and suppress those cravings. So any other, um, maybe some like common beginner mistakes yeah. that you've witnessed in your training or your consulting or something that you have helped solve before that maybe you want to share now? Absolutely. So they'll listen to their college friends. <laughs> they'll say hey i'm doing this program it's awesome uh oh okay so why are you doing a bench press why don't you do push-ups instead <laughs> and then they do it and i'm yeah. like yo dude if i want if i wanted push-ups in there instead of a bench press i would have said so <laughs> right. what i see a lot of people doing is mixing matching methods there is there are a lot of things that work out there. There are, there absolutely are. There's, I mean, you see all these transformations all the time from people doing all these different things, you know? And the thing is though, it's set up for a reason. It's a system. Take something out from the system and try to replace it with something less or different just for the sake of it will give you that. Nothing. They will just, <laughs> you know, like doing it half ass isn't gonna get you anything. Yeah. Do it. You know, like, and that's the thing too. It's like, I see way too many people in college being so excited to, or young people too, like get so excited for something. And then they let their influence of somebody who doesn't even have, or like never been through a transformation like that or gaining muscle. They'll listen to their big chubby friend who's still trying to lose weight. And then they'll listen to their suggestion. And I'm just like, yo dude, like, Look at the people that have what you want, you know, and who have the experience and listen to them for a little bit. And when I mean a little bit, I don't mean 24 hours. I mean, <laughs> give it a good three months, eight weeks at least to see some results. And then you can start playing around with things, you know, like a lot of rule breakers do the same stuff. They're like, well, you got to know the rules first and do it. And then you can find what rules you need to break later. 
And that's what I suggest for people. Just give it enough time first before you start rule breaking. You know? <laughs> I really wish I had been talking to you like 10 years ago <laughs> when I first started, because I did that same bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, just for example, I, that was probably 10 years ago when I first discovered uh, Martin Birkin's Lean Gains. I don't know if my audience isn't familiar. He is um, a very popular fitness personality. I think he's a certified nutritionist, but he has contributed a ton to the world of intermittent fasting and how it relates to yes. training and reverse pyramid training and some of those concepts. But I got one of his sample programs. I think he, he gave it to a client like 10 years ago or seven years ago. I don't know. But I decided that, I didn't like the way it was set up, so I started, I, okay, I'll take this exercise and do it on Monday with this exercise, and I'll do this over here, and long story short, nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I got so frustrated, and I think I, lo I lost a lot of weight, which at the beginning, I was like, hey, I'm losing weight, but I wasn't getting any stronger, and I just looked thinner and more fragile than I already was. And I was like, well, what, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> so, and then I, I kind of gave up for a while. I was like, ah, eh, this fitness stuff just doesn't work. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, and then, then you go around saying to other people, this didn't work. And then people don't believe you. It's like, well, you didn't do it. You know? <laughs> exactly. You laid out. So I know that's, that's an important thing. So I would say to anybody who's listening to this or watching this, if you do decide to take a chance on Kevin's programs, which I highly recommend and I think they're great, do them like he says to do them <laughs> when you start. Like don't change anything, just follow the instructions. I think that's one thing when people that get inside their head and they think you know, fitness is, is always, has to be real customized and all this stuff. If you're just starting out, you know, usually almost, you know, a lot of the programs will work, okay? I mean, you have to know how to structure a program, which is what you have and what you're offering, but you got to do it the way you structured it. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you don't know enough about your own body yet to start making little tweaks. Yes, exactly. And then you'll find out you go back to the basics anyway, and they always work. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think this was a great interview kevin i really appreciate you being on uh could you share um where people can learn about you more and find out more information about you sure so my website's currently like you said under construction but it should be up and running pretty soon but my old website was pursuefit.com and then i'll redirect my new website anyway so you won't have to worry about that and then you can see it there but you can also follow my instagram it's at pursue by kevin and I also have a YouTube channel that's been growing recently, and that's just underneath my name, Kevin Kreider, K-R-E-I-D-E-R. -E that is absolutely awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate you taking the time to share tons of awesome information with my audience. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. <laughs> All right. That'll wrap it up for us. This is Kyle Campus Gaines, Build Muscle, Get Lean in College. Talk to you later.